Hi, my name is Anup Muniapa, and I'm one of the current third year internal medicine residents at UCSF. In this video, we'll review the basics of inpatient hypertension management. The content of this talk is for medical education purposes only. And our objectives, as we said, will be to review the basics of inpatient hypertension management for the medical ward setting. A brief outline, we'll first talk about definitions, We'll review the general principles of inpatient hypertension management. We'll go over our specific approach, and then we'll briefly review medications that can be used. First, a normal adult blood pressure is less than 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury. Hypertension is defined as greater than 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury. And severe hypertension is a systolic blood pressure greater than or equal to 180 millimeters of mercury or a diastolic blood pressure greater than 120. Some important definitions that we'll use in this talk are hypertensive urgency, which is severe hypertension without signs or symptoms of end organ damage, and hypertensive emergency, which is severe hypertension with signs or symptoms of end organ damage. Some general principles. First, Inpatient hypertension rarely requires aggressive acute interventions. And we know that rapidly lowering asymptomatic hypertension with IV medications is associated with adverse events. And if a patient's blood pressure remains persistently elevated after treating any underlying causes, then using oral antihypertensives to gradually lower the blood pressure is preferred. So now to our approach. In patients with severe hypertension in the inpatient setting, the first step is to assess for any symptoms. In doing this, we're really assessing for any evidence of hypertensive emergency or evidence of end organ damage. To do this, you should first ask about any symptoms like new headache, blurry vision, neurologic changes, chest pain, or shortness of breath. You should perform a focused neurologic and cardiopulmonary exam and if you are suspicious for damage to any one specific organ system, here are some of the tests that you can consider. It's important to note that true hypertensive emergency is relatively uncommon, but if you are concerned about this, then it generally does warrant ICU admission for close monitoring and IV antihypertensive therapy. If you've excluded hypertensive emergency, then the next step is to assess for and treat any potential factors that could be contributing to elevated blood pressure. Some common things that we see contributing to elevated blood pressure in the inpatient setting are pain, anxiety, bladder distension, antihypertensive withdrawal, alcohol or opioid withdrawal, hypervolemia, certain medications, and CNS disorders. Once you've assessed for and treated some of these factors and blood pressure still remains high, then the next step is to review and restart any home blood pressure medications that may not have been continued in the inpatient setting unless they're contraindicated for some reason. After doing these things, you should reassess the patient's blood pressure after at least 30 minutes of rest, ensuring that you're using the appropriately sized blood pressure cuff. If you've done these interventions and the patient's blood pressure still remains severely elevated, then you should consider initiating an oral antihypertensive agent. In terms of timing, the blood pressure should really be reduced over the period of hours to days, and typically this should be on the order of days. You can consider more rapid lowering in a patient who is at increased risk, such as one with a known aortic or intracranial aneurysm. In terms of blood pressure target, you should lower the blood pressure by no more than 25 to 30 percent in the first several hours, and a reasonable short-term target is less than 160 over 100 millimeters of mercury, but the long-term target really depends on the patient's individual risk. In terms of medication choice, long-acting oral antihypertensives are preferred some commonly used agents are ACE inhibitors, ARBs, calcium channel blockers, and thiazides. There are some short-acting agents listed here in case more rapid lowering is indicated, but none of these are ideal choices for long-term use.
Next, let's talk about the management of elevated blood pressure in the inpatient setting that is not severe or is not quite as high as 180 over 120. In general, you can use a similar approach as before, where you can evaluate the patient for any symptoms, treat any underlying causes, and restart their home antihypertensives unless there are any contraindications. It's important to know that these patients are at relatively low risk for any acute complications from elevated blood pressure, and the benefit that they're likely to derive from antihypertensive antihypertensive therapy are really long-term. And we know that overly aggressive uptitration of antihypertensives in the inpatient setting can result in adverse outcomes. So a practical approach is if a patient's blood pressure is persistently elevated greater than 20 millimeters of mercury or so above their goal, and really we're talking on the course of several hours throughout the day or even a few days, then you can consider initiating or uptitrating oral antihypertensives for this patient. Now, here is a brief review of the medication lisinopril, which is a long-acting oral antihypertensive. If you'd like to review this slide, please pause the video now. Similarly, I've included a review of amlodipine, another long-acting oral antihypertensive. If you'd like to review, please pause the video here. And finally, here's a chart just reviewing the principles of severe hypertension management that we've discussed. The first step is to assess if the patient is symptomatic or has any evidence of end organ damage. If so, they should be treated as possible hypertensive emergency. If not, the next step is to assess and treat any potential contributing factors to elevated blood pressure. If blood pressure remains elevated, you should consider if there are any home blood pressure medications that have been held and restart those unless there's any contraindication. And then blood pressure should be rechecked after 30 minutes, ensuring that the patient has been resting and an appropriately sized cuff is used. If the blood pressure is improved, there's usually no acute treatment that's indicated. If blood pressure still remains severely elevated, that's when you can consider initiating or uptitrating a long acting oral antihypertensive in most patients. Thank you for listening to this presentation, and I want to say thank you so much to all the frontline healthcare providers out there who are working on the COVID-19 pandemic. I hope you found this presentation useful, and I hope you all stay safe and healthy. Finally, here are some references if you'd like to read about this a little bit more. Thank you so much.